she's doing 99.9999% of the work. So as long as she was getting what she was comfortable with, that's whether it was a doctor or a midwife or, you know, even, um, you know, if we, like I said, if we had to go to three different clinics or three different uh, practices to find what she wanted, that's whatever she wanted was my priority. And, you know, seeing how they put her at ease with, you know, their upfront honesty and just how open they were, that it made me comfortable too in the end because she mm-hmm. was comfortable. Getting pregnant and giving birth are two of the most exciting things you can ever hope to experience in this life. The moment you think you could be pregnant, you're frantically searching for all the best information, which is why you're here today. I'm Stephanie King, and with my many years of experience as a professional childbirth educator, doula, and lover of all things pregnancy, birth, and postpartum, I'm here to make preparing for your birth enjoyable, empowering, and totally easy. Each week, I'll cover different topics, interview professionals, and get into the nitty-gritty birth stories from mamas just like you. And when you're ready for more, you can join me in the My Essential Birth course at myessentialbirth.com, where I take you step-by-step through exactly how to prepare your mind, body, spirit, and partner for a birth you love. So let's get started. It's time. The My Essential Birth postpartum course is here. Whether you're pregnant, just got baby home, or weeks and months into postpartum, this is the course for you. No more wondering what's normal for your body postpartum, if baby's eating or pooping enough, or how to get a good latch. You now have an all-in-one resource where you can click a topic and get the answer. Learn more at myessentialbirth.com forward slash postpartum and add it onto the My Essential Birth course for even less when you bundle them at checkout. Already in the course? Check your student library and add the course for the same discount. I can't wait to support you on your postpartum journey. All right, our reviewer of the week is N. Schmidt 4. She says, I am pregnant and thriving. Honestly, that's all I ever want to hear. I love it so much. But she says, love, love, love this podcast. I found this podcast later on in my pregnancy, but so glad I did. We moved to a new state where we didn't know a single person halfway through my pregnancy. I was terrified knowing that I was going to be laboring without my mama there to support me and encourage me like she did with my other babies and had to count on my husband, who, while amazing in other areas, was not so amazing in the labor and delivery room. I was about 34 weeks pregnant with baby number four when I stumbled across this podcast while desperately looking for encouragement and tips to get me through the labor and delivery process on my upcoming birth. I knew I wanted a natural, unmedicated birth after having three with an epidural in a hospital. Unfortunately, due to finances so close to baby, I was unable to take the birth course, but I binged these podcasts. And thanks to Stephanie, I had so much more knowledge and confidence in myself to stand up for what I wanted out of my birth. And I was able to teach my husband what I was learning and give him tips that we practiced and prepared. With everything I use from these podcasts, the help of a very supportive midwife and my husband, I'm so happy to say that I gave birth to my beautiful baby boy completely unmedicated in May. Thank you, Stephanie, for everything you discuss and for reminding me almost every time I listen that all caps, I am strong and I can do anything I set my mind to as long as I've done the homework, practiced and wasn't afraid to ask questions. There is no doubt in my mind that I wouldn't have been able to do it without everything I've learned here. That's really powerful, and I want to say a huge thank you. Yes, for those of you that are listening, um, if you're not able to jump into the birth course, whatever the reason, financial, you're a little late in pregnancy, whatever the case, um, binge the podcast. That's what the information is here for. And yes, if you feel like your partner is not ready to go and up to par, well, I have the perfect guest for you today. Um, but also, that send them podcast. Shoot it over to them. Get them involved. Get them excited. Um, this is something you guys absolutely have an opportunity to do together. Um, and then for those of you who are thinking you want to jump in, there are two options. You can purchase the birth course in full or there is a payment plan. So go check that out at myessentialbirth.com forward slash get started. For today, I have with me Autumn and James. Um, I'm going to give them just a second to introduce themselves here. Uh, But they are here because they've had an incredible birth, a great birth story to share with all of you. And I cannot wait to be able to hear this along with you guys. So Autumn and James, will you take a moment, say hello and introduce yourself. Tell us a little about you. 
Hi, um, I'm Autumn. And I'm James. And um, I am an avid My Essential Birth podcast listener. We're also um, course students, I guess you you could say graduates. Um, We had our first daughter, Reagan, in November of 2022. um, And it went so well, we just couldn't wait to share it with you guys. That's awesome. I'm so excited that you're here, honestly. Uh, will you, for a moment, just kind of walk us through your pregnancy? How how was it? Was it pretty textbook? Was there anything that stood out to you that you think would be helpful for other moms to hear? Yeah, it was pretty textbook. Um, I would say we had a very typical pregnancy. Um, found out that I was pregnant at about five weeks, um, just about five weeks after we got married. Um, <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> really unplanned. It was unplanned. <laughs> but we were excited and, um, you know, made it through that first trimester with the typical morning sickness, um, definitely a lot of exhaustion. I was working, um, and I'm a teacher. So I was really just looking forward to not just second, um, trimester, but also going on summer break so that I would have that kind of relief. Um, second trimester was phenomenal. It was such a breeze. I was not sick. I didn't have really any issues past all of my tests and blood work and all that good stuff with flying colors. Um, and then third trimester, again, very textbook, the exhaustion hit again. Um, but outside of that, I don't really feel like we had like a, wow, crazy pregnancy at all. (laughs) So straightforward there. Well, that's pretty fun. Tell me maybe what was your experience with birth prior to getting pregnant? I'm curious to hear from both of you guys. Um, and at what point did you decide you wanted to do something to prep for it? And what sparked that interest for you? So I really um, didn't have any knowledge as far as like birth and pregnancy goes. Um, I had kind of always thought, honestly, that people that had natural births or that didn't want an epidural were kind of crazy. And I was like, why wouldn't you? Like, it's modern medicine. Why wouldn't we do that? Um, And then the second I got pregnant and started to really learn um, because I found the podcast just um, in looking through, um, you know, Apple podcasts, found the podcast, started listening and just became engulfed in learning and couldn't get enough of it. Um, and it was at that point that I was like, Oh, I'm doing this naturally. Like I'm going to have a physiological birth. I really want to just rely on, you know, the new knowledge that I have, but also the power that I feel like my body possessed. So my, I guess knowledge of birth literally came all from the podcast. I had nothing before. My <laughs> husband, on the other hand. <laughs> yeah, my uh, my experience was slightly different. I'm a firefighter paramedic, so I've delivered Uh-oh. two babies in the <laughs> field. So I was on the other end of it, like the traumatic end of it, you know, like I'm touching someone's baby. So to me, that's what I knew. I knew more clinical stuff. I didn't know what it would be like. I had no idea what it would be like to go through it with my wife being pregnant and her going through the ups and downs of pregnancy. So for me, it was a entirely different perspective, even being in the delivery room. You know, I'm used to, like I said, I'm on the other side of it, you know, so I know the complications and things that can happen. But when it's your baby, it's that's a complete game changer. Like you're in a different mindset, which was the biggest surprise to me, I guess you can say. Yeah, that's interesting. The only thing I have to like as an example, because I've only been the person birthing myself. Right. But as a doula, I remember thinking my first birth that I attended, I was like, I'm going to know exactly what this woman needs. Like I've had three births and I like I'm all studied up on it. And I was so grateful that I had some tools of like what to do because I I wasn't connected to her in her mind. Like I must have thought I was going to be, <laughs> you know. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's a really good place to come from. I wonder, it's so interesting because usually first time dads, this is like complete opposite, right? Like this is not the experience that they're having. Um, was there... Was it more now you've had like the traumatic experience, but was it more calming to be on the dad end or is it was it stressful? Yeah, I think in some instances, like I don't get, you know, if she coughs or chokes on something, you know, I'm not jumping up and going, oh, my God, oh, my God, because I I know uh, those kind of things. But as far as being a dad, it's still a complete learning process, like every day in and day out, you're just trying to figure it out. Hmm. But as far as like the medical side and. God forbid if I ever had to do, you know, CPR or chest thrust or anything like that, like that's not, I'm good with that. It's (laughs) the raising 
hard. That's that's what I'm trying to figure out, which yeah. hopefully I'm doing a good job. <laughs> We're all just learning along the way. It's OK. Yeah. yeah. There, there's no uh, there's no book or podcast about being a parent. You guys prepared us. <laughs> <laughs> but we're waiting for that part, the second part. Mental of it. note. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Talk to me about your providers. Tell me a little bit about your providers. Um, did you, was it just like your regular OB? Like, did you change providers? Look like interview a couple different, like what did your provider situation look like? So I, um, went to like my typical OB provider. Um, the difference was that, the OBGYN who I had been seeing for years and that I knew, you know, very well, um, he actually started his own practice, like when I got pregnant, um, and split off and I was like, Oh, cool. Um, so that kind of threw me for a loop. And I didn't even really realize that you didn't have to see a doctor that you could see midwives. And so we went with the midwife route, um, after listening to the podcast, um, I just kind of realized that that was the route I wanted to go with. I felt more aligned with the values of the midwives that, um, the practice had. Um, so we did go to, it's, it's actually in a hospital, um, and they have four midwives in the practice who we loved all of them. I yeah, mean, they were every, even the doc, we got to meet them all. They were all fantastic. Mm -hmm. And biggest thing for me was she was happy with mm -hmm. and comfortable with her provider. So that's, I don't care if we went to, you know, four different locations, as long as she found what she wanted, that was kind of my end of it. Yeah. And I was going to be really specific about what I wanted. I think, um, I, pr I probably am a little too type A. So I came in with probably, I don't know, 50 questions. <laughs> um, I remember at one point um, we had an appointment. It was probably halfway through uh, the pregnancy. And I had done some research on their cesarean rate and all that at the hospital. And I was like, why is your cesarean rate significantly higher than the national average? Do you mind talking about that? And um, I'm sure that I came off as like, again, type A, um, but I just really wanted to know. And I was always pleasantly surprised with their answers um, and always really had a, like happy to hear that they were on board with whatever my goals were, our goals, I should say. <laughs> so they were great. We loved them. That's awesome. James, what was your experience with that when you met with the midwives? Did they put you at ease? Were you concerned at all about her being with midwives versus OBs? Was there anything like that? Um, so I didn't really have a, a preference. I mean, she's doing 99.9999% of the work. So as long as she was getting what she was comfortable with, that's whether it was a doctor or a midwife or, you know, even, um, you know, if we, like I said, if we had to go to three different clinics or three different uh, practices to find what she wanted, that's whatever she wanted was my priority. And, you know, seeing how they put her at ease with, you know, their upfront honesty and just how open they were that it made me comfortable too in the end because she mm -hmm. was comfortable yeah that's awesome they were good about including you too for sure yeah yeah <clears throat> they were like i said very open any very informative if we had a, a question they would go above and beyond the answer it like it just felt like it was i don't know it just made it a little easier i guess you can say yeah because you felt more at really ease. well yeah yeah that's oh, awesome <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Never fails. So um, <laughs> as as pregnancy continued and you're getting closer to your guest date, did you have anything like talks of induction, GBS? Were there like anything that popped up for you? So the induction talk was only a thing with one of the four midwives um, and all the rest of them. I had made sure that it was a question I had asked every single midwife as we met with them. Hey, I'm not a high risk pregnancy. Everything's going great. Um, I did not have GBS um, and it's my first time, you know, my first pregnancy. There's no indication that I'll go or that there's no indication there will be an issue. So will you let me go up to 42 weeks? And three out of four of them were like, heck yeah, that's totally fine with us. Like as long as there's nothing wrong, like 42 weeks would probably be our cutoff and we would obviously want to do an induction. But there was one that was like, oh no, at 40 weeks, we're going to induce you. And I was like, <laughs> no, you're not. Yeah. Nice no, try. you're not. <laughs> like, um, so I had actually already had a plan. Um, <laughs> this is probably not good medical advice. I was certain that if they did try to induce me, I would just schedule an appointment and then miss it. 
Yeah. Well, and you don't even um, have, like, even if they try to, right, for those listening, like, you don't mm-hmm. have to schedule that appointment. You also exactly. do not have to go, but, like, you you have the opportunity to say no. Yeah. But exactly. whatever your and fallout plan is, whatever works for you, it's your decision. Yeah. You get to choose. Yeah. 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 So we, I was very adamant against an induction um, just because of all of the um, research that I had done. Um and because their induction rate and cesarean rates kind of went hand in hand. So, yeah. um, yeah, so that was not an issue. Like I said, I was, um, GBS negative, so that's good as well. Um, and I made it to about 39 weeks and five days, I think. So surprisingly did not even make it past 40. So it wasn't even an issue. <laughs> Nothing to worry about. <laughs> but yeah. isn't it so yeah. nice to like have a plan in place so that either oh, way, yes. yeah. That's really great. Um, Did you happen to have cervical checks at any of your appointments later in pregnancy? And if so, what did those look like coming up to labor? I did not. I actually, um, they had started asking me um, at like 37 weeks, I think. Yeah, when I was at term, they started asking me if I wanted to do them. Um, And even when they did my GBS swab, they asked do you just want to do it real quick? And I was like, no, I'm not interested. It's not going to change the outcome. Right. And they were like, no. So, um, I actually did not have any of the first cervical check that I had was when I went in, in labor. Awesome. So yeah. maybe we can start there. No, let's not start there. Okay. Talk to me okay. about before <laughs> you got there. So, yeah. oh wait, no, no, no. Let me pause. Let me hear everything. I, I did not want to skip this part, but that I, I'm so excited to hear the birth story. Um, okay. but, but tell me about the preparation that you did along the yeah. way. So that was kind of like all the background, all the information about your pregnancy. But as far as preparation, like when, how many weeks were you when you decided to dive into the birth course? Ooh, okay. So I think I was probably five weeks when I decided to listen to the podcast and I was, it probably was one week bef- like until I was like, okay, well we're doing the birth course. <laughs> so then it was just a matter. <laughs> yeah. Um, so then it was just a matter of like waiting until, um, we both had the time to commit to doing it. Um, and that we kind of wanted to wait until a little bit later, um, in the pregnancy to actually do the course so that it was like really fresh in our minds. Um, so we probably started around, I would say like 30 weeks and we just kind of slowly went through it. Um, did it like a couple times a week, like twice a week. I think we would pull up some videos and, um, some nights we would like binge it. And then other nights we would just do like one short thing. And, um, so we did that a lot. I was really adamant about, um, the three free exercises right from the get go. And then, um, especially just being on the ball on that birth ball, we were watching TV for, I would say probably like the last five weeks. I did it every single day. Um, as far as other preparation goes, we did a couple things, um, that I felt like truly helped. Um, the first for me was labor rehearsal. Um, so every single time I would get in the shower, I would make sure that the shower was really warm and just really relaxing. I used these like, um, like steam scent things that would go in the, on the shower floor. Um, and then I brought those to the hospital with me as well. Um, so the smell was very calming, um, and just kind of like swayed in the shower and let that water just run down me. And I also, in that time, every single time I was doing those labor rehearsals was kind of like hyping myself up, but also, um, in, prayer mode. So, um, we're Christians. And for me, like God was going to be at the center of this birth. It's a huge part of the reason I really wanted to have a natural physiological, physiological birth. Um, and so in that, you know, I would just constantly like try to let go and let God for, you know, not to be cliche, but lack of better words. Um, so that labor rehearsal. And then I would say the second biggest thing, um, was just being on the same page with James, um, who stepped out to go get Reagan. Um, but he and I had a lot of really good, open, honest conversations about what our expectations were after the baby came, what my expectations of him were when I was in labor. Um, and just kind of talking through like, what can you do to support me? Um, And I think that really, really prepared us. I mean, we got um, really deep in a lot of like a lot of these conversations and it really paid off for us. 
That's awesome. Uh, I love so much of that where, first of all, the visualization, I think, I mean, it can't be expressed enough that if you have a time, whether you're using like one of the videoed labor rehearsals or like a focus, like every time I do this thing, I am imagining having a contraction, breathing into my belly, you know, visualizing yourself being in labor and working through it. Or like you said, like, hyping yourself up like that self-talk that we do and then same thing with like bringing God into it or whatever you're using to really um, center yourself and feel connected to your baby and your body in this experience all of that is so huge I was very much the same way it was like anytime I laid down anytime I leaned back on the couch anytime I was like laying down to go to bed I couldn't help it I was like always pretending I'm like okay now I'm gonna pretend like you know like it was just constant constant and I think there is something to that you know you really get yourself in that mode the other thing that you talked about was using that time in the shower you created the warmth so like when we talk about relaxation practice when we talk about labor rehearsals we in, in this muscle memory that goes along with it, the warmth of the shower, the fact that you were in water, the smells that you had, like you are doing all of the things that when your body is actually in labor and you take that stuff with you, you you walk into a warm shower and you bring those little things that you're smelling with you, your body is naturally going to start relaxing on its own anyways. So I think that's like very powerful stuff. Uh, were, were there things that the two of you did together that you feel like were really beneficial. It sounds like you watched videos together. It sounds like, um, did you have any, like, did you practice any of the labor rehearsals together? Did you have any hands-on stuff that you did? You did a lot of communication. Like what really yeah, stands did, out for you? I remember uh, she was big on the exercise ball. So we did like some exercises and movements on that. Um, just, you know, she was talking me through like, hey, if I'm feeling a certain way or if you, I feel like I'm not making progress, we're going to try this and, you know, maybe progress to this. So, I mean, there was a time when it was actually happening that we weren't making any progress. I don't know, maybe a half hour or so. Yeah. So, I mean, she was switching positions in the room every couple minutes. So just at least practicing a few of those, it was a little mm -hmm. smoother. I mean, it's kind of controlled chaos, but, <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it helped a little bit because I at least I had an idea of what yeah. she wanted. And that's, I mean, you're not going to be an expert on it, practicing it a few times, but just yeah. having an idea makes it just a little easier for her. So that was my goal the whole yeah. time. So, And we also did like um, counter pressure and all of that. Oh, we yeah, did yeah. practice that quite a bit. Um, and just, yeah, like you said, trying to practice doing all of these different positions because I knew that was my goal mm -hmm. was to just constantly be moving. <laughs> so yeah. he was great about helping with that. We got, we got physical for sure. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Like even... Um, it feels so silly before you're actually in labor, right? To like practice and yeah. do these things. You're like, my husband yeah. and I laughed our way through a lot of this stuff. Like, this is so <laughs> dumb, you know, oh, whatever. Yeah, there was a couple. I'm like, there's yeah. no way this is going to help you. Right. But like, turns out <laughs> counter pressure was right. a huge thing for her. It was, yeah. Yes. It really helped, oh, I so. love that. So then you're like, yeah, all that awkwardness. It does transfer for those who are listening. It like, does. it is, yeah. it's worth your time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's not awkward during labor at all. No. I feel like there was no weird moment where I was going to ask him to do something and I had like a, mm, this is going to be awkward to ask. No, literally all inhibitions completely gone. And I think <laughs> us practicing it helped that a lot. Thank you for sharing that. I, I think that what you yeah. said is very true. And I think yeah. other moms need to hear that. And dads. Yeah. <laughs> dads listening. Yeah, yeah. sure. <laughs> um, did you do anything in preparation coming up to your labor? So were you drinking red raspberry leaf? Did you do any dates, evening primrose oil? Did you have any birth prep stuff that you did? I really just, again, like moving. I We walked a lot. We were going on evening walks. Awesome. We have a dog. And so we were going out and doing that every single evening, um, just trying to get steps in around the block. Um, and really, I think, you know, like curb walking and, um, that's what's called, right? Curb walking. Yeah. We were doing like a lot of that. Um, but no, other than that, like, honestly, dates are so gross to me. So I was really <laughs> praying that I wouldn't go over 40 weeks. Cause, and I've also heard really bad things about red, um, raspberry leaf tea. And so I was like, mm, I really don't want to have to try like a midwife's blend or any of these <laughs> things. Um, so I was like, I don't, I don't really need nausea from the first trimester to make a reappearance. Are you, you mean here. castor oil for the castor oil? Maybe. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. where it like no, no, no. causes some discomfort in your digestive area. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was like, no, thank you. I, I yeah. just don't want any of that. So thank God. I mean, had I gone, I probably would have gotten to 40 days and or 40 weeks in one day and then been like, all right, give me all the things. <laughs> um, but that really wasn't an issue. So I just moved a lot. I mean, walking around, um, like I said, being on the ball, doing our exercises, all that stuff. Um, I just feel like really, really prepared me. Um, but luckily didn't have to take or do any of those other things. So that's awesome. Okay. So tell us, start yeah. from the beginning of your very first contraction. Where were you? Okay. What time of day was it? What was it like? <laughs> were you by yourself? I mean, do you know with the actual first one? I we mean, played them off for so long. It's we did. Like, <laughs> um, like, no, it's we're it's Thanksgiving. Like we just, I just ate, ate too much. much. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's oh, my goodness. Those, you know? Yeah. Oh, this is going to be so good. um, (laughs) It was Black Friday um, and he was actually working. I was home and I didn't really feel contractions, but I just kind of felt like Braxton Hicks, right? Like I was uncomfortable, but I was exhausted. I mean, like I could, I slept all day. I was probably up for only the amount of time that I needed to um, basically like walk the dog and feed myself. That was it. Um, and so Friday I was just so tired and I didn't really think much of it. I was like, Oh no, am I getting sick? Well then Thursday or I'm sorry, Saturday rolls around. And so this is now the Saturday after Thanksgiving, we were having, um, like a belated Thanksgiving with my dad's side of the family. And naturally I ate like an obscene amount, way more. And (laughs) she just was not having it. She was like, no, I want out of here. So I just remember, you know, like everybody's tired from eating too much and we're like sitting on the couch. I have my head in his lap and I'm kind of like wincing, right? Like I've got like just this, oh, I'm uncomfortable, like period crampy. Mm. Well, my Nana had tuned in on that. Nana was there and Nana's watching me. And pretty soon, like after a couple of times, she's like, that's 10 minutes autumn. And I was like, what? (laughs) So she's sitting there timing every time she could see that I was uncomfortable. Um, and so that's kind of when we were like, Oh, I was like, no, yeah, no, we're two days early and there's no way. Yeah. Cause that was the 28th. No. What am I saying? That was the 26th 20, yeah. and she was due on the 29th. And so we were like, no way. So, you know, we drive home Well, we get in the car and I don't know if it was just me being seated in the car or what I was very uncomfortable then. And it was that's, like, Oh, that's when I kind of started. All right. Maybe this is it. Cause like, her demeanor went from like, she's a little uncomfortable to like, I'm, I'm uncomfortable. uncomfortable. Yeah. Like, you can see it on her face. But then we but, got like, home. But like excited. Yeah, I was we're like, like, oh, okay. We're, yeah. <laughs> we're going to do this. Then we got home. It's about a 30 minute ride. And then we got home and then it was, she was fine. It was, then we're like, okay, so was that just the gas? Like we thought it was. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I was convinced it was like padromal labor. And I was like, oh no, I'm going to be one of those people that just has like padromal labor. It's like false for weeks and I just don't have my baby for, you know, ever. And so we get home, I'm just relaxing, goes away. Well, we go to bed and, you know, of course our bags are already packed as they had been for probably two months because like I said, I'm type A. Go home or get to bed and it's like probably one in the morning and I'm like sitting, laying in bed, just kind of counting through what I now know were obviously contractions. Um, and then probably around 3 a.m., I was like, you know what? I'm going to go get in the shower. I'm going to relax. I'm going to, I like braided my hair. <laughs> um, I was like, let's just get ready just in case. Like, let me maybe put my eyebrows on, put some mascara on. And so I did. And then um, I remember I came back to bed and he was still asleep. I was like, I'm going to let him get as much sleep as he can because this might be the last time ever. And I just laid next to him and just kind of like worked through it and slept as often as I could. Um, it was probably like six or six 30 in the morning when finally I was like, okay, it's time to get up and he can get up with me. And we went for a walk and it was when we were on the walk that my contractions went from being like seven minutes apart to being two and a half. Um, so it happened really quick and we were like halfway around the block and I was like, this little contraction counter has to be wrong, right? <laughs> um, I was like, you better not have this baby outside. <laughs> <laughs> We're not doing that. 
Yeah. But she didn't mention that she was also sick. Oh, I did she not mention like that. She got like a head cold, so like naturally, she, of course, she couldn't breathe oh. at all. <laughs> oh, she yeah, goodness. run a low grade fever, so yeah. perfect timing on that too. Yeah. So I'm not feeling the greatest, and you know, I we get back home. Um, again, I lay down and my contractions spread back out again. And so then I'm like, oh my gosh, it, it, just get me. It can't be real because otherwise they wouldn't slow down this way. So, you know, he is all like, I don't want to deliver a baby at home. And I'm all like, I'm not going in until I'm eight centimeters dilated um, <laughs> because I don't want, <laughs> I don't want an epidural. Um, my biggest fear was that I would get there and they would send me home. Hmm. Um, and so I was being very stubborn. I will absolutely admit that. Um, it wasn't until probably like 10 o'clock, 10 30 mm-hmm. when my mom actually came over to give me like the typical sick things, you know, like my Gatorade and chicken soup and stuff like that. And she was like, um, no, you need, you need to go to the hospital. So they convinced me and mm-hmm. we went and we were there by like 11 o'clock. Um, And I just remember like we walked in and it was like the front reception area and they just were like, hi, like, how can I help you? And I was like, um, I I think I'm in labor. Where do we go? (laughs) What do we do? Yeah. They're like, you're in labor. We're like, we think, we think so. So then they put her in like a, like a little eval room just to check, see if she was dilated. And they're like, oh yeah, you are. (laughs) I was five centimeters um, when we went in. Um, which was kind of crazy. I think we both were really surprised by that. Mm -hmm. Um, and the nurse was really surprised by it too. She told us later, she was like, I was really worried. I was going to have to tell this poor girl, you have to go home. Like, cause you're not far enough dilated just based on how I was acting. And she was like, I was shocked when you were five centimeters. Um, because I guess I was just handling the contraction so well, but, um, I just, I mean, I just was like breathing through it and, And like excited, you know, and also I think it helps that I was in such disbelief that I'm so stubborn that I was like, no, I'm not in labor. I'm not even 40 (laughs) weeks yet. That doesn't happen. Right. Um, Although obviously I knew that it did happen because I got myself educated. Um, (laughs) So then we got into a room. We were in a room really quickly. It was probably only five minutes at that point. They were so slow. Um, which was really nice for us because the nurses were just so terrific and gave us undivided attention when we needed it. Um, and they just kind of, you know, let us labor on our own (laughs) and let us just hang out, um, hang out. Like it was fun. (laughs) That's not necessarily the case, but, um, they were very, since I think there's only one other couple there. So they were like, very like, Take you, you time, like let her get in the zone. Like mm-hmm. we're That's right awesome. outside the room. If you need us, come get us. So they were very like hands off until like they had to be hands off, yeah. which was what she wanted. She exactly. wanted to kind of do her thing, do her, uh, you know, her steam shower and things like that. So they, they, again, the hospital was great. Yeah. Um, speaking of the shower, I do remember at one point I was, I don't know, it was probably like two in the afternoon because we had got there at 1130 in the morning probably like one or two in the afternoon. And I was like, okay, I'm ready to get in the shower. And he was like, are you sure? Because that's like your big thing. Like that is your biggest coping mechanism. Do you want to pull that card? And then like, you're, you know, you're all out of um, like magic (laughs) helpers. Yeah. So I was like, oh crap, you're right. Okay. Let's not. So we just tried it a couple different um, positions and, um, and definitely that helped. And I probably got in the shower. I was probably at least nine centimeters, like nine centimeters at that point. And I remember being in the shower and I had that steam going and I was so frustrated that I could not get the shower hot enough. Yeah. Wasn't I? Yeah. It was, I was like <laughs> 90 degrees in that room. She's like, it needs to be hotter. I'm like, you're going to burn yourself. Like, just, <laughs> like, it's hot. like yeah, trust me. Yeah. I was like, I, I just need all the steam. I need the hot water. Um, but it still was so refreshing. And I luckily was not like hooked up to all the, um, I didn't have an IV, an IV. I didn't have, um, monitors everywhere. I just had, um, like the, a Bluetooth monitor, I guess. Yeah. Like that's on the wireless. Stomach. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wireless, um, monitor. So I was lucky to be able to be able to move as much as I wanted. Um, and so 
it was in the shower that I remember I looked at him and I mean, this is TMI, but I've heard so much more TMI on this podcast. I looked at him and I go, I have to poop. (laughs) He was like, what? Um, why are you like excited? He started laughing at me because I was like, oh my God, I know what that means. Like, I have to poop. That means the baby's coming. Should I try? And he was like, I, I don't know. Like, it was just so, it was so weird. But like, just knowing that, oh my gosh, that means I'm so close. So at that point, the um, midwife and nurses came in. I went to the um, bed and they checked me. And she was like, oh, yeah, you're nine centimeters um, dilated. And I was like, uh, oh, OK. Or no, I, no, must have been more than that at that point. Um, but my water had not broken yet. And as she was checking me, um, my water broke, which is the one thing that I was like, mm, that's a bummer, because I just really <laughs> wanted to um, deliver in the call. Is that what it's called? And mm, call. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know why, but like that was a dream of mine. Um, So when, you know, she was doing a cervical exam and my water broke, I was a little bit annoyed at that. I mean, could have been unintentional. But anyways, um, at that point is where things um, I definitely could recognize that I was in transition because it was at that point that I was like, give me the epidural. Give me everything you got. (laughs) And they were like, oh, honey, even if we could, we wouldn't let you because you're doing so good already. Like why, you know, you have this goal. Let's do it. Which I was pleasantly surprised about. Yeah, Um, that's awesome. Yeah, they were very much like, no, you told us this was your goal. We're going to stick to your goal. And from everything I had really heard about providers, that just isn't the norm. No, it's not. Um, That's awesome. So. I felt really blessed with that. Um, And I also knew James goes, hon, you're so close. That's why you're asking for that. Like you want to give up because you're on the cusp. Um, And so that's when I was able to start pushing and we tried several different, um, different positions. I ended up actually pushing on my back was the most comfortable for me, um, which I was very surprised about because I had, kind of been like, you I don't want to push on my back. I just don't want to do that. <laughs> um, and that was what ended up working for us. Um, the only thing that I would say was kind of, um, I guess you could say iffy about our delivery was that during pushing, um, it had probably been an hour, maybe, maybe 45 minutes of pushing and Reagan's heart rate started to drop. Um, she had been crowning for a very long time and I just wasn't getting her out. Um, and so my doctor or my midwife, Naomi, absolutely love her. She just looks at me and she goes, Autumn, you're going to get this baby out in one more push or I'm going to have to do an episiotomy, which she was totally bluffing. I now know (laughs) because she has told me I don't do episiotomies. Like I don't do that. (laughs) but I'm in labor and I'm like, no, please don't. No, no, no. We're not going to do that. No. (laughs) So I was like, I can do it. So one push later, she comes out, um, and her heart rate, um, went back to completely normal. Um, and it was, it was great. Um, they had even, I guess her heart rate had dropped so much. I didn't know this. James told me this later. They had brought the NICU team in, um, for fear that something had or was going wrong. And obviously then, um, dismissed them as I was able to get her out. So, um, that was, that was our birth. Um, (laughs) following the birth, uh, we did have just a a little bit of hemorrhaging, a little bit of hemorrhaging is not really a thing. (laughs) Um, so I did end up getting a shot of Pitocin, um, because, or a shot of something and, and an IV of something else, um, because they couldn't get me to stop bleeding. So I did get that whole time that they were working on me. It was probably about an hour. I did get that time to hold Reagan, um, skin to skin and have that golden hour. And they delayed doing all of her vitals and everything, um, for a little while after that, which I was really happy about. That's awesome. And they got me to stop bleeding. So <laughs> <laughs> all good stuff. <laughs> So I wanted to ask you, um, because I feel like 
it's just it's interesting to me but i know other moms want to know too you kind of described your contractions at the beginning where you were like i can't really tell if they're gas pains or this or that will you explain Mm -hmm. um how those contractions changed or felt as time went on like were they tight were they painful in your back and your lower belly did you feel them through your legs like what did that look like for you as time progressed um so I honestly would just say that originally it felt like a really mild period cramp, like, um, very much just in my like lower abdomen, um, and enough like a period cramp to be like, could this be, but not strong enough for me to be like, this is definitely labor more so just uncomfortable because I ate too much. Um, but it was really when, like I said, when we got in the car, where those pains, um, ramped up and it was very clearly not a gas type of pain and more so, um, like I could feel like my uterus was contracting. Um, I didn't have any pain in my back. Um, I would just say that it kind of radiated from my lower abdomen out towards my sides. Um, a lot of my contraction pain was also in my hips, Um, like I could just really feel it, um, like in my lower pelvis. Um, and so for me, I was really happy not to have any sort of like back labor. Um, and like I said, it just kind of all radiated from my lower abdomen, like out into my hips and sides. Yeah. So that kind of leads me to ask what comfort measures did you use throughout the labor process? Cause I know that your husband had mentioned you enjoying counter pressure, during labor. So like early on, were you breathing, swaying, laying? What did that look like? And then as it progressed, what what did you use for comfort measures? I was going back and forth between swaying where I would, um, I was doing it on the counter a lot, like our kitchen counter, you know, the quartz countertops were cool. So I would like rest my face on that and then just kind of like let my hips sway back and forth. Um, so I would go between that and then like laying down, um, almost in like fetal position with a heat pad on my lower abdomen and on my hips. Um, and I'm just, I guess I really love the heat because like the shower, (laughs) I could not get those heat pads to be hot enough. Um, so I would do that. Um, I was listening to, um, like rain sounds and just like relaxing sounds like that. Um, just kind of letting myself get in the zone and, um, really think through the contractions, um, and focusing like in terms of counting down. So I knew that if I could make it to the top of the contraction, I could make it back down. Um, and there is this really silly thing that I do. And it's from like a really ridiculous TV show. I can't even remember the name of it, but they said anybody can do anything for 10 seconds. So anything that's hard count to 10 and then just restart right? You can do it for 10 seconds. Well, you can do it for another 10. Um, and so that's kind of what I would do. I, you know, get to 10 and be like, Oh, I, I already did that 10. Why not 10 more? Yeah. I like that a lot. So those were kind of some of the mental things that you were doing in your mind. Was there anything else that you were saying to yourself or, um, had going through your mind that helped you? Um, I just kept referencing back to the birth course and trying to like think of everything that I had learned. Um, I was really into listening to the birth stories um, towards the end. And so kind of going back to things that um, I had heard other moms do um, that was working for them. And so constantly just like I said, kind of hyping myself up, um, reminding myself I could do this. I was trying to pray a lot, um, which I wanted to do early because I remember one of your birth stories that you had kind of gotten to a point where you're like, I just can't do this anymore. And you were like, wait, why haven't I prayed? Why have I waited this long? Right. <laughs> yes. And so just really getting through it that way, um, mentally. And then as far as physically, like I said, doing the, um, warm compresses, um, swaying, walking around a lot. And then James doing counter pressure for me. I did try a couple other, um, things like I tried the comb, um, the comb trick in your hand. It didn't personally work for me. Um, I don't discredit it by any means because I know everybody is totally different. Um, but for me, it just wasn't really doing it. Um, 
what else did I do? I had, I brought so many things that we didn't even end up touching because we didn't need them, but like a TENS unit I had brought with me. Um, I had brought like a cold compress, all that kind of stuff. Um, and another thing that I did, um, I guess kind of going with like mental preparation or mental things that I did in labor, um, at my baby shower, I had all of my loved ones, all of these women who were really influential in my life, write on a note card, um, something inspirational and it could have been scripture. It could have just been something funny. It could be, um, just like a a sweet memory, anything like that to kind of distract my mind if I was feeling the need for that. Um, cause you know, I love the like inspirational quotes and stuff like that, but they're not personal. So to read something from my mom who birthed me or to read something from my best friend who's had a baby, um, or my sister who is my base cheerleader, that was really amazing to me to have. I love that. It kind of reminds me of what they do at Mother's Blessings. Um, Like one of the things that's pretty common is everybody brings a different bead Right. And then they like say yeah. something to you about that or like some kind of power that, you know, like for my, your strength and your wisdom and your whatever. And like it goes into this bracelet and it's kind of the same thing yeah. where you just like look at this as you're laboring and like I'm holding on to all this strength and power from these people. Exactly. I love that you personalized it like that. And you're going to have that like forever <laughs> to be able to yeah. like keepsake, you know, or use for your next birth or whatever. That's yeah. really cool. I really, really like that idea. Uh, Were there other ways that James supported you during labor? Did he speak for you? Did he speak to you? Was he rubbing you, touching you, getting things for you? All of the above. (laughs) Yeah, all of the above. Um, We joke that I did not pick up my own water bottle for weeks. Um, Like starting labor, he was constantly keeping me hydrated um, because I'm a big water drinker anyways. And so I knew like that was a big thing for me. Um, keeping hydrated, making sure I had snacks. Um, And so he was just constantly like feeding me something or giving me water. Um, And it would just be like at times where, you know, I'd be maybe in the middle of a contraction and he would be this perfect distraction to just be like, here, drink and just hold it up to my mouth. Um, And the weeks after, even like when we got home, I, we still joke that I didn't pick up a fork or a water or anything. Like I was taking care of the baby. He was feeding me or giving me water. Um, I would say that was a really big one. I know that's like such a silly little thing. Um, but just keeping me hydrated, keeping me well-fed and he was so encouraging. I mean, his words were, um, really amazing to hear as you know, you're going through labor. Um, he would always say, okay, we're one closer. We're one contraction closer to meeting her. Um, and that really helped me a lot. I like that for those listening. And you notice that James is not here to ask. He's out with their baby girl right now. (laughs) I'm I'm sure people are listening and be like, why is he not saying anything right now? when she's asking these questions. Uh, (laughs) That's awesome. That I, Yeah, I I hope everybody's story is like that. Like if people are listening right now, if you're listening right now, I would say 100% like have your husband or birth partner listen to this birth story for that reason. Um, it yeah. sounds like you had an incredible support. And I think so much when we have the love and support that we need from our birth partners, we can allow other things to go or mm-hmm. our focus can be on the things that matter most for us at that time. Yeah. So that support, that communication, I think you guys have been an excellent example of all that. It's huge. It's really what moms need to hear. Yeah. Um, I love to end these episodes with a what is your best advice to moms and best advice for dads. So I would love to hear that from you. Maybe we'll have to pull James back in. Yeah, I will. I will try to pull him back in. But if not, he did um, tell me already. Okay, like that's great conversation. What's his best advice? Um, So I personally would say to moms, um, invest the time into learning everything that there is to learn about um, the birth that you want. Um, And that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have the birth that everyone, you know, that someone else had. It just means Um, learn all your options um, and be well educated in that. We invest so much time and so much effort into so many things in our life, right? The planning that goes into a wedding or um, the schooling that it takes to get your degree, right? Why would we not put the um, 
time towards getting educated about this amazing thing um, that our bodies are capable of doing. Um, you know, so I would say just take that time, get educated. Um, and also to be flexible. I think flexibility is a really big thing as well, because I, um, I knew what I wanted, but I knew that there were so many ways to get there. Um, and my providers always appreciated that I had a birth map, not a birth plan. And I was like, oh yeah, that was definitely me. I came up with, I don't know, I'm just kidding. I was like, I, no, I can't take that one. Obviously that is my essential birth. Um, and they really appreciated that, you know, while I, wanted to know everything and I had a specific goal, I was flexible in how we would get there. Um, yeah, so that's my advice to moms. Um, and if you would like, I can pull James back in here real quick. Totally up to you. I want to hear your advice for dads too, though, like mom's advice advice for dads. dads. Like if you could say something to dads that are listening, what would it be? Yeah. Um, I would say, dads, make sure that you are very open to everything that, you know, mom wants in the birth. Um, And I would not necessarily placate, but definitely make sure that she feels heard um, and that her worries or um, anxieties or wishes of any kind are listened to. I would also say get educated, um, learn as much as you can, because if you are ignorant going into it, um, that's not the place to learn, right? The delivery room is not the place to learn. Um, And lastly, I would say, please don't get offended if we tell you we don't like something, because that was something we had a conversation about um, very early on. I was like, hey, if I don't like the counter pressure when we're doing it, I don't care how much we practiced it beforehand you're going to stop. And he was like, Oh yes, absolutely. And so it was just no question that, you know, if we, he was doing something, um, like whispering in my ear the wrong way. And I was like, please stop, you know, or or just, no, (laughs) you understood. It wasn't personal. And, um, and he was just going to do what, what I needed and what I didn't. So that would be my advice. (laughs) I love it. Yeah. If you want to see if he can switch in, that's great. If you want to give his advice, that's great too. Okay, I'll go grab him. Okay. All right. Tag team, I'm in. (laughs) All right, James, thanks for coming back. Um, We were ending it. I love to end these with the best advice for for moms and for dads, like from your perspective, but really quick. And I think Autumn did a great job of talking about what you did during the labor. But if you have a minute to kind of talk to other dads, other moms that are listening about how you supported well during labor, like what you found that she needed or how you got in your groove, I think that'd be really helpful. Yeah. Um, So I mentioned earlier, like, you know, women do 99.9% of the work during pregnancy. So anything that I can do to make me take a percentage, make it a percentage easier for her. That was my goal. I'm not really like a huge emotional person. So, you know, when she's going through her ups and downs throughout pregnancy, that was a challenge for me. I, I, you know, I took, took a little bit for me to, you know, act appropriately for that. Um, that was a challenge for me. Um, geez, that's scary. (laughs) Um, but yeah, so that that was the biggest challenge for me is, you know, being there for her emotionally, because that's something that, you know, as yeah, I, I was, wasn't good at. Um, I feel like I got better throughout the, the pregnancy doing that. Um, and then finally, towards the end, I feel like I, I was in a groove, you know, just, you know, little acts of affection and, you know, just being there for her if she wasn't feeling good, you know, maybe helping more around the house, things like that um, in the hospital. You know, obviously, she's doing a lot of the work. So for me, it was, you know whether I was keeping time, you know, when she needs to switch positions or helping her with the shower, or helping her stand up, you know, helping her with the exercise ball, giving her water between contractions, you know, uh, she asked for a prayer while she was in contractions. So little things like that, I felt, you know, to us, it may not seem like a lot, but to her in the moment, I feel like it probably went further than, uh, it went real far for her, I guess you can say. Um, and hopefully that made it a percentage easier for her. You know, that, that was my goal. So be there as much as I can, because there's only so much you can do. But uh, sitting on the sidelines, not doing anything isn't uh, something that you should do. Right. So, no, what you can um, do matters. That was, that was the biggest yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like I said, you know, 
for her, the only really input I had as far as like, I just didn't want to have a baby at the house. <laughs> um, being, you know, in, in the medical field, you know, I felt comfortable, you know, if God forbid something were to go wrong in a hospital setting with people that were there, not that the people that come to your house aren't capable. I just felt more comfortable for, for, uh, for that scenario. And, you know, there was a time where she was stuck in the birth canal and her heart rate was dropping and they brought the NICU in. She had no idea that was happening. Of course, I, I saw all that. So in my mind, I'm like, oh, <laughs> so I'm trying to not disseminate my, I guess, fear onto her because, you know, she has to do that one last push, um, which she did and everything was fine. But um, that's just the biggest thing is just being there throughout the pregnancy was emotionally uh, being there for her emotionally. And then, you know, during it, just helping her you know, move and get water and snacks and, and little things like that that go a long way. Yeah, that's awesome. It's all good support. Um, yeah, with that in mind. like a lot, but like in the moment, like, oh, you know, she was it's like, she's still talking about it. She was like, how you were giving me water. I was like, I was just holding a cup, but you know, yeah. if that's important to you. I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> I, love that. I love that perspective. Yeah. Cause for, yeah. for the women and during the time, it's like, it is a bonding. Yeah, it's like all it's yes, it's exactly what you need. And you are just so loved for doing it. So that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I figured, like I said, if I could just make it just a smidgen easier for her, you know, that can go a long way. Maybe yeah. it gives her that extra energy for that push, you know. Yeah, so. it really does. Um, with all that in mind, what do mm -hmm. you have as far as your very best advice? If you were talking to moms that are listening and your very best advice to dads. Um, I would say patience or talking post baby or just in general, like anybody that's, that's listening to this birth story, maybe coming up on their own pregnancy and birth experience. What's your, what's your advice to them? Would you tell them, um, work together, communicate, like what stands out to you the most? Uh, definitely communicating. Again, I'm not a huge communicator. <laughs> Autumn will say something to me. I'm just like, oh, I don't really know how to answer that, but Communication is something that you have to do throughout the pregnancy because it's important to know what she wants. Um, again, the, the whole emotional aspect, being patient and understanding, you know, again, to me, it's just holding a cup. But to her, it's, you know, maybe life changing in that moment. Um, and the biggest thing is it's OK to be a little scared. Uh, it's, it's a big life change. Um, I was kind of I love the idea of kids. Um, but I, I would never, I felt like I was never going to like volunteer, like, hey, let's have a kid. And it kind of <laughs> just happened for us. So I had no choice. I was like, all right, let's do this. So, you know, I always, I, I was scared, you know, it's, it's a big life change. So it's okay to be scared, but it's also the best thing that's ever going to happen to you. So, you know, it's going to be tough at moments, but the good moments always far overshadow, you know, the lack of sleep you're getting or, you know, if you had a tough day with the baby, those things are always secondary to, you know, the baby smiling or crawling and things like that. Like, so patience and communication are the biggest things for me because it's easy to get frustrated, especially when you're not sleeping a lot and things like that. So it's always important not to, uh, you know, Pit, like, hey, I changed five diapers. You only did one. Like, you're a team. So it's like we changed this many, you know, always it's never like one person's outshining the other. So always try and stick together as far as like everything you do is one as opposed to, well, I did this, you did this, I did more kind of thing. Because it's easy to do that, especially when you're sleep deprived. So, so true. <laughs> um, that would be the biggest thing is patience, I guess. I love that. Well, thank you. And please tell Autumn I said thank you. I really appreciate you guys being here, telling your story, sharing your strength and experience. Um, because moms, she she had mentioned, you know, I loved listening to the birth stories. And now you guys get to be a birth story that other women yeah. get to listen to yeah, along the way. She was very excited. She was an adamant listener. So that when you guys gave her this opportunity, it was, it's been the highlight of her uh, past couple of weeks. So That's I'll, awesome. I'll, I'll make sure she knows. Okay. All right. Well, you guys have a great day. Thank you again so much. Thank you so much. Take care. If you loved what you heard today, the very best way to support this podcast and help other moms to find it is to leave a quick review. I read one at the beginning of the episodes and I would love for yours to be next. And if you're ready for even more pregnancy, birth and postpartum goodness, come join me in the My Essential Birth course at myessentialbirth.com where I will hold your hand and walk you through pregnancy and birth step-by-step step so you're totally prepared for a birth you'll love. See you next week.